Welcome back to Science Nightly News. Today we will be focusing on GMOs, or genetically modified organisms. We have two special guests joining us, Austin Levino and Abby Sullivan. I'm Emma, and I've been studying GMOs for 10 years, and I have a pretty good understanding of them. At the end of yesterday's show, viewers are asked to text in some questions about GMOs, and we are here to answer and give our opinion on those questions. And the first question is, what are GMOs? GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are exactly as they sound. They are living organisms whose genetic makeup has been artificially changed through genetic engineering. Scientists will insert a gene from an unrelated species into another to get the specific characteristics. An example of this is strawberries. The strawberries are injected with fish genes that protect them from freezing. There is a lot of controversy about GMOs, but as the expert here, I'm going to give you the cold hard facts. It is mandatory to label GMOs in 60 countries, excluding the U.S. Most corn, soy, canola, and sugar beets grown in the U.S. are genetically modified. Most of these crops are genetically engineered to resist glyphosate, a weed killer. There is currently a federal bill that would preempt all state GMO food labeling laws that would allow the natural label to be used on genetically modified food. Before we move on, let's talk a little bit about the history of GMOs. In 1935, a Russian scientist named Andrei Nikolaevich Belozersky isolated pure DNA. Then, in 1973, a college student at Stanford University Medical School came in with the idea for man-made DNA, or rDNA. rDNA, or recombinant DNA, is when you take one piece of DNA and combine it with another strand of DNA. In 1975, a group of biologists got together with a few lawyers to create safety guidelines for the safe use of genetically engineered DNA. In 1980, the first GMO patent was issued, allowing the first living animal to be tested. Then, in 1982, the FDA approved the first GMOs. Twelve years later, in 1944, GMOs started appearing in grocery stores. In 1996, weed resistance to glyphosate and herbicide used with many GMO crops are found in Australia, such as sweet summer grass and windmill grass. In 1997, labeling GMOs becomes mandatory in Europe. In 1999, more than 100 million acres worldwide are planted with genetically modified seeds. Then, in 2003, GMO-resistant pests appear. One example is a BT toxin-resistant caterpillar come out. This caterpillar was discovered eating GMO BT cotton crops down south. BT is a protein that is toxic to insects, hence the name BT, to BT, to BT toxin. In 2011, BT toxin was discovered in the blood of a pregnant woman. Further testing discovered that the toxins could be passed on to the fetus. In 2012, a French farmer by the name of Paul Francois sues Monsanto for chemical poisoning. Francois claims that the poisoning was caused by the pesticides lasso that was created as part of Monsanto's Roundup Ready product line. Finally, just last year, in 2014, Monsanto's patent on the Roundup Ready line expired. However, in 2009, they created a patent Roundup Ready 2 that is said to make the first seeds outdated. Let's get started. Hello, I'm Abby, and I own a family farm that has pledged to never, ever use GMOs. They are dangerous to health and can cause diseases and aren't doing much good to be healthy. You may eat your fruits and vegetables, but GMOs can make them unsafe. By buying non-GMO foods, you help yourself and your family be safer, and they will know that by eating the food, that food, they're eating much more better and natural food for the environment. Austin, I hate to tell you, but Starbucks even uses genetic modified ingredients. Well, GMOs are very helpful to me, being that I own many farms all over the world. They help me increase my profit while at the same time my products are ensured to be healthy no matter what the condition is. Also, GMOs create their own pesticides. Therefore, they are protected from insects and other creatures from eating the crops without actually being sprayed with pesticides. This saves time and money on replacing damaged crops as we provide the best for our customers and spending money on, pe on pesticides. Luke from Illinois texted in asking, are GMOs safe? Austin, what is your opinion on this? GMOs are safe. In fact, they protect our crops from many creatures that are looking to harvest on them and destroy them. They also produce a healthy product that looks much prettier than, than the organic and non-GMO products. On top of that, the quantity that is produced is far larger. This helps my farms that are located in maturing countries as it creates more profit for them, for them helping the workers, ch children, and their families. As you can see in the photo, there is a farmer collecting strawberries containing GMOs. These will be distributed to surrounding villages to help fight world hunger. 
I do understand how some people may be hesitant to eat these products as it is a new technology, but there are many benefits that make GMOs useful to many people. GMOs overall provide a less expensive and better tasting product while helping people in third world countries. It's a win-win. Even Dr. Margaret Smith from Cornell University agrees. In a speech she was giving, she said, Your digestive system is meant to break down those things. You then absorb them as small molecules and your body builds the things you need out of it. This was a comment on whether or not GMOs are broken down in the body. It just proves that GMOs are safe and actually beneficial to the human body. Abby, what do you think? On our farm, although we never use GMOs, we never use pesticides either. Which brings me to inform you that GMOs make their own pesticides, which are very dangerous and a direct con to GMOs. And also to our bodies. They can cause harm to wildlife. In a study from 2012, there's shape changes in three types of amphibians, the leopard frog, American toad, and wood frog, in a study of feeding them Roundup Ready crops, which are genetically modified to be resistant to the, to the herbicide chem, a chemical to kill weeds, Roundup. Roundup is the brand name of the herbicide made by the company Monsanto. Patented in the 1970s, the active ingredient glyphosate found in Monsanto products has been shown to cause in humans autism, celiac disease, or gluten intolerance, and potentially many other issues such as cancer. In wood frog and leopard frog tadpoles, Roundup induce relatively deeper tails. Also, quotes, in the natural environment, the presence of predators can cause tadpoles to change shape by altering the tadpole's stress hormones, causing them to grow bigger tails to be better to better escape from predators. But similar shape changes have been seen after exposure to Roundup suggests that the weed killer may interfere with the, with the hormones of tadpoles and potentially many other animals. Clearly, that is not normal and obviously not healthy either. Plus, when you're eating GMOs, you do not know what's inside, and that's when allergies come in. You may react to something in the food you didn't know about, or even if you had an allergy to it and you had no idea. There is an alternative, though. Eating organic foods. In an article on organic foods, it is stated, in terms of health advantages, organic diets have convincingly demonstrated to expose consumers to fewer pesticides associated with human disease. As you can see, less pesticides associated with human disease sounds just like GMOs and Roundup. As my family always eats organic, I encourage everyone to do so also, because you aren't eating the pretty much fake genetically modified food. Yes. GM genetically modified food is a bit less expensive, and they may look a bit more attractive to eat, as it goes with human personality, looks are much less important than what's on the inside. In GMOs, that is unhealthy added genes that can cause various diseases as I described earlier. Come on, who wants to eat that? Lee from Wisconsin asks us, are GMOs always labeled? No, unfortunately, even though a majority of consumers want them to be. Since it is not mandatory to label them, the biotech industry has managed to keep it a secret whether it's genetically modified or not. Foods such as meat, eggs, milk, and dairy products from an animal on a genetically modified food diet are not labeled. Labeling is also not required for additives, flavors, and vitamins created with the help of genetically modified microorganisms. Food with GMOs does not have to be labeled if the food does not contain more than 0.9% of GMOs. However, GMOs are still there. When food packaging is not labeled to say that it doesn't contain GMOs, you can't trust that there aren't any. There's no law for all 50 states to be mandatory label, but as Emma said before, in 60 countries it is. Actually, Connecticut, Vermont, and Maine are the only states to pass a law in the U.S., but because no other states have, it cannot go into effect until more do so, because distributors distribute food to more than one state, and if it isn't required to label in those states, we can't send them all labeled. Since we send products to other countries, they could decide whether or, not to buy, whether or not to buy from us because they might like labeling and want labeling. If we don't have that, they will not know if they are modified or not. And the U.S. would lose money. Even if this food doesn't look as appealing, maybe it's smaller and a bit less pigmented, it's so much better for overall health if you buy non-GMO food. While the people who don't know about GMOs will still buy the food they usually do, having a countrywide law requiring products to be labeled will grow more attention towards the issue and many people will realize the true dangers of GMOs. Actually, 93% of people, 93% want labeling for GMOs. And it's obvious that the 1 million people, 1 million, who have called on the FDA to label should be enough. I believe that by labeling, it will draw more publicity to GMOs and make a difference in what shoppers buy. Go. 
I believe that packaging should remain the way it is. It has been this way for many years and has proven to be very effective as many more people are living to be over 100. The majority of people will most likely not change what they buy as they most, most likely have been doing so for many years or their entire life. On top of that, it will be a major expense to many companies and could be detrimental to them. This could put many companies out of business. It could cost many Americans and people all over the world their jobs. Now a word from our sponsor. Ever wonder why certain products have the letters non-GMO on them? This means that they do not contain genetically modified organisms. Genetically modified organisms are when companies that grow, that use other products to make their food, their product, use GMOs in their crops. For example, in Skitty Pop, right here it says it's non-GMO. Also, in Smart Balance Butter, it also says it's non-GMO. However, in Cheerios, it, there's no indication that it doesn't use GMO. Therefore it's, it, therefore, it's implied that there are GMOs used. GMOs can cause, GMOs may be beneficial to the companies that grow them as it makes it cheaper and produces more product for them. But it can be harmful to your family as it can cause serious diseases and illnesses. To find out more about GMOs and how they can affect you and your family, go to saynotogmo.org today. Many are asking about how most Americans feel about GMOs. According to a survey conducted by the New York Times, 53% of all consumers would not buy food that is genetically modified, and about 93% of Americans want to know if the food they buy is genetically modified. Just less than one-third of Americans support GMOs, which isn't a high amount. In a survey collected by ABC News, 50% of people believe that GMOs are unsafe, and 13% of people weren't sure about them. On our farm, we do our best to keep the crops looking fresh, and we want people to enjoy them. The crops that we grow include many of the most common with GMO use, corn, soybeans, sugar beets, etc. It's unfortunate to think that there is an easy alternative, organics, yet people don't want to spend a few extra dollars, even though it can protect their health. Would you believe it only costs 10% more to buy organic? The United States accounts for two-thirds of all GM foods across the world. No wonder we are the most unhealthy country. It's such a shame that there are no laws for GMOs because more people will know about leaving. Hopefully in the future, there will be. Yes, but that 10% can really add up. Listen, when families are struggling with money in this day and age, the organic products are not what they think of. Feeding their families is the main concern. An extra few dollars a week can put the financial burden on those families and genetically modified foods are less expensive and provide enough nutrients to keep people healthy. Organic products, of course, are 100% not, not genetically modified, but the price turns so many people away. Genetically modified products are helping many children around the world get meals, whether they are eating them themselves or the child of a farmer whose paycheck increases because of all the benefits. Yes, but it's much more expensive for companies to test and make GMOs, and a few extra dollars a week to prevent diseases, obviously, is the right choice. Again, they can cause allergic reactions, and super weeds can also be created, which are herbicide-resistant weeds that cross into wild weeds and cause the super weed-resistant herbicides to be created. This makes bacteria stronger and much, much harder to kill, which farmers, like myself, do not want to deal with. In addition, some GMO foods can have antibiotic features added to prevent diseases and viruses in them, making antibiotics for when we are sick much less effective. As I mentioned before, animals such as the leopard frog, American toad, and wood frog who were given GMOs who had hormone, had hormone issues after, and GMOs have been shown to greatly affect poor innocent animals like those and humans too. The best option for this crisis? Don't consume GMOs! Well, I'm sorry, the GMO project doesn't have time for lazy farmers who don't want to deal with their super weeds. Ah! Well, after hearing all this, you as viewers now know all the pros and cons of GMOs. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to consume them, and hopefully in the future, we can find ways to understand GMOs better, and maybe there will be laws for them. Thank you for having me here today. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me too. Remember, say no to GMOs. Support the GMO project and their fight against lazy farmers. I had a great time. Me as well. It was a great time. Don't forget to support your favorite GMO company. Thank you for tuning in to Science Nightly News. Join us tomorrow as we visit the world of cloning.